Marcellus, I'll start yeah. with you. I, I know did squats right today, man. I'm working on that Look, thickness. <laughs> I'm going to start with Marcellus because I know this is right up his alley. He's been talking about this yeah. all season. Mm. Is the pocket passer era over? Mm. First, let me double tap that thickness right there. <laughs> yeah. Get in trouble when I get home. But uh, <laughs> let's talk about the mindset and the desires of the mobile quarterback, the 2.0 quarterback. Yeah, it's over, pocket passers. The mindset in terms of resisting those mobile 2.0 quarterbacks, it's over. But the problem is they don't have the personnel necessary to do it. Think about this. This is a, a marketplace issue, a supply and demand issue. And because of all the years of resistance to quarterbacks who can maximize their attributes and actually run when the play breaks down, because of that climate, that resistance to that quarterback, you don't have the necessary supply and personnel to meet the demand. So what you're going to now look at is the collegiate ranks and those coaches at the youth level and high school level starting to say with an open mind, I don't have to put you into the cornerback, running back, receiver line. Do you have an arm, son? And if you do, now you are going to get that full opportunity without resistance to mature in that position. I've seen it on the youth level. Lamar, LeVar, once again, Lamar. LeVar is a high school coach. He's seen it as well. They're coming, but now they're going to come in droves. But pocket passes will still survive this transition. But Ooh. their days are numbered. Yeah, I don't think it's the end of the error, but I, I think your point is well taken. Who's the next great pocket passer? Uh, well, here's the thing. You, you got you to gotta understand what pocket passing is versus scrambling passers. You know, Lamar Jackson is a true running quarterback. He can run the ball, as, as and that's not – to take anything away from guys like a uh, uh, Russell Wilson, but those guys are scramblers. They're dual threat. Their uh, dual yeah. threat is different than the running quarterback. No, no, I know. So, That's why I, in right. the essay I said okay. dual threat. You did say dual threat. Pocket and 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 <laughs> so I, again, so to say pocket, there are some pocket passers that are mobile. Who's next? You know, I'm not. I'm not. That's Mel Kiper's conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, look around the NFL. But Dak you, Prescott you can, can run. But you, oh. can, you look around the NFL. It's a bunch of guys that can run when necessary. But there are mobile quarterbacks that are pocket passing quarterbacks. Even like you look, we're, we've had the conversation about two and different. Some of the guys that are coming out um, of the college ranks, they're able to run. They're mobile when they need to be mobile, but they are still rooted in being in the pocket and being able to deliver the ball. So. Yeah, I, I think that I think a dual threat quarterback is far different than just a pure running quarterback. Mm. Like I, I don't think the pocket passer is going to die by any stretch Who's of the imagination. That be I, I mean, who is who? I mean, there are there a bunch of is you consider because because Mahomes got fifty nine yards. Do you consider him a running quarterback? He can he, run when he, he wants to. Certainly, he can. Yeah. John Elway could run when he wants to. Uh, There's a lot threat. of guys that can run when they want to. Russell Wilson can. Russell Wilson eviscerates you from the pocket. That's what his number one priority is. So it's not like the pocket passer is going to die. Correct. What you have to understand about Lamar Jackson is this is an entirely different offense. This they're running an offense that is one of one. This is the only offense like it in the National Football League. So you have created an entire different offense. I think the conversation is, do other NFL teams decide that this is a viable option? Because if you ask John Harbaugh, and I've asked him, is it sustainable? I don't know. Right? right? Not enough. I don't know. Enough but the bottom line is this. He takes two or three shots that we'd like him not to take, but so do the drop-back quarterbacks. And this guy, uh, again, is one of the most dynamic athletes we have ever seen on the face of the planet. So I don't know how many guys you're going to get to be able to operate that, what they're doing, Wait, compared to being able to throw it from the pocket. All I'm saying, a month ago, the whole, oh, my God, Patrick Mahomes dislocated his knee. We must sit him down until he's completely 1,000% healthy. And, and and here we are three weeks later. That was the voice we was using. Yeah, that was the voice I heard. That was the voice. That's how I heard it. That's how I heard it. And so <laughs> now I'm looking at him on Monday Night Football just three weeks later running the football six or seven times. You cannot convince me that that is not, as an organization, Andy Reid and them going, damn, you know what? <laughs> we need a little bit of a dash of this if we're going to beat the Patriots and compete with the Patriots. This thing about can my quarterback be sustained is out the window. It's how can I get instant gratification and get me a Super Bowl 
And if a running quarterback can do it, which it's an extra dimension, I think guys are going that direction. Well, I think it's deeper than instant gratification. Uh, I think finally they're listening to their frontline soldiers and the head coaches of the world. If they ever walked into a defensive meeting, especially defensive line meeting, we were sitting there scratching our heads and dumbfounded when we heard guys want to stay in the pocket. When we see a scouting report and the guy is not taking full advantage of scrambling out the pocket when plays break down. So you ask the question, who's next in terms of just pure pocket passers? I have to look at the numbers, even if the names don't blow your mind, in terms of quarterback rating right now. In the top ten, there are three guys that may fit the pure pocket passer build. Kirk Cousins, Matthew Stafford, and Derek Carr. Okay. Now, versus... Oh, oh, (laughs) seven guys who are certainly have the ability to run mobile 2.0. And who would you rather... That list you just rattled off, Cousins, Stafford, and who was the third guy? Derek Carr. Derek Carr. I'd re- In the top ten, I'd take all three of those last. <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> and But this is to the point I've been saying, but it's just I don't understand the resistance. I didn't understand the culture that said don't maximize your attributes because of protection. As soon as you cross those white lines, I don't care what jersey number and what position you play, there's hell to pay. And now they're realizing, well, nah, let's go out there and maximize these guys, not to put them in harm's way, but just because they can get more I, for their I, Mark, money. I heard you and Cowherd talking about this today, or I know Cowherd was, and I think he brought you into the uh, conversation. The offensive line play isn't what it used to be because sure. you are not allowed to practice. Right. And so some of this is just out of necessity. Yeah. You're not going to have the kind of protection in the pocket. You Cor- better correct. have a quarterback correct. that can move. Part of, it, part of it was always you are afforded protection in the pocket as the quarterback. Outside the pocket, you know you guys are going to try to knock dudes' heads off. I mean, that's just the way it is. So that was part of the the allure of having the pocket quarterback. But the problem is, is to me, and I will tell you flat out, uh, one of the hardest skills in the world, you think about playing offensive line. It is one of the most skilled positions in football. And think about this. We are the worst athletes on a football field. I mean, when you – no. Well, I mean, sometimes when, uh, it, when you talk about position by position, well, in your case, yeah. with yeah, right. that's true. <laughs> but look, I mean, think about it. Think about it. I've seen, yeah. I've seen corners transition to safety, safety to linebacker, linebacker to D tackle or D end, D tackle to D end to D tackle, offensive line. You're a fan. That's the next transition. <laughs> like there's no, you can't go anywhere else, man. Right, right, right. And so you're the worst athletes on the football field. So when I am, every time I play. I am outmanned by you athletically. Yep. Mm. So from a skill standpoint, I have got to understand leverage. I've got to understand where my help comes from. I've got to understand my footwork and my technique to stop you on a day-to-day basis. And now I don't get to ever practice it again. So from that standpoint, you're you're 100% correct. Here's the other thing that's interesting. You're at five-year windows anyhow, Right. You're in a fight. So why are we why are we obsessed? And this is where this is where this is where Baltimore is is way ahead of the curve. Everything's a five year window anyhow. So why are we trying to find a quarterback for the next because, 20 years? They're just that's, like, hey, man. That's traditional that's the, that's the football. That's the right. obsession of traditional football. You want to have. Sure. Yeah, but, that's but the you're, yeah, you want to have that franchise guy for years to come. But with that being said, I think you, you, you're you hitting it right on the net. And, and it's funny because I know you're about to transition us into the next question. And, and it, it directly hits into that. Well, I mean, to that point, one thing yeah. that you're, what's an unintended positive consequence of the 2.0 quarterback is the running game which is leading Baltimore in their drive to success. You can't defend 11 guys right. active in a running game. Here's you the can't. Thing. Mathematically, you're I like, what we do gotta we do? Move. We got to oh, move. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, okay. And that, to me, hmm. is the secret sauce for unraveling Bill Belichick. Great, hmm. I Great think segue. the running quarterback is the secret sauce. And, again, I'm tell- if I'm Andy Reid and, and the Chiefs, I- I've had a conversation with Patrick Mahomes like, we got to have a little of this with your legs if we're going to do anything in the postseason if we see New England. That's not the secret sauce. That is not it. That is not the kryptonite to Bill Belichick and their defense because we've seen too many guys in the pocket dart them. If you want to ask any fan looking at the Patriots and say, what's been our kryptonite? Only one name comes to mind, Eli Manning. 
and Eli Manning couldn't move. Couldn't move anywhere. Mm, and that's the, luck in the Super Bowl. Okay, you call it luck, but it happened twice. Hey, Tyree. It happened a couple times. Luck, luck, luck is not striking that often. And then there are other guys, other memorable losses. I know we're all hanging our hats on to what we just saw with Lamar Jackson. But do you remember Joe Flacco? Do you remember uh, uh, Alex Smith? Who has the ability to move but didn't move in that game, had five rushes for three yards and beat them 42 to 27. So the memorable losses, the big losses for the Patriots, actually came from guys who just stood still and said, let me dart you. Mm. There is a way to beat Belichick, and there's also a way to run around and try to beat Belichick and improvise, but it happens both ways. It's the line. The secret sauce to beating the New England Patriots is the mm. offensive line or the defensive line. Those, those New York Giant teams that won, their mm. defensive line yeah. dismantled mm. the Patriots up front and did not give, uh, give Tom Brady the opportunities to, to get to where he was trying to go. On the offensive side of the ball, it's amazing to say that they don't practice like they used to. Mm -hmm. they, they're not as, as equipped and skilled to block the way that they once blocked to create that pocket. Well, you know who's creating those lanes and creating that safety? The Ravens offensive line. You know if they're rated in the passing game? Number one. Yeah. They are the, by pro Beef. football focus, they are the number one rated blocking unit in the National Football League. That's your secret sauce. You put that extra running back back there that can actually throw the ball along with running the ball. <laughs> now you're it. playing basketball. The only thing I think y'all missing out on is Stefan uh, Gilmore, Gilmore yeah. and Jason McCourty and their ability to shut down receivers one-on-one -on -one for how long? Coverage. Hey, for they how do long? it hey, for, well it for doesn't it doesn't matter if you can run it i, I think there's yeah. a couple i think a couple things here with baltimore one john harbaugh is not walking over to bill belichick to get an autograph pregame uh -huh. mm. okay they're not intimidated mm. they are not intimidated by the new england patriots they're one of the few teams that says we don't care that yeah. you're the new england patriots yeah. so they're not intimidated by them that's number one. Number two, when you break them down, you operate as an offense. Split down the middle of the offensive football field from the center, right? Count you got up. six guys on Count one up. side, five guys on Count another. Yes, now all of a sudden they say, blue 80, blue 80. Said, huh. They start a receiver in motion. So they bring the receiver, the tight end, and now the tailback. Get the number. So it's, you've got five guys on this side of the football field, and at one point it was four <laughs> on five. And now all of a sudden your quarterback's running, and it's six on five or seven on, on five. Mark, and they're them. eating people. I mean, they are eating people. They got three big tight ends. I call it heavy spread offense. It's one of the most amazing offenses I've watched. And then you flip side that they're like, okay, listen, we're going to eat up the clock. Mm -hmm. We're going to run the ball and eat up the clock. And we're going to force you to try to beat us throwing the football because you can't play the game that we play. And now what? Wink Martindale, their defense coordinator, says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm bringing pressure. Anytime Wait. there's anything going on, man, we're in zero coverage. You block six, we're bringing seven. You block seven, we'll bring eight. You block five, we'll bring six. You don't have an answer for us. And if we're going to lose, we're going to lose bloody in your nose. And we can live with that. And that's the Baltimore Ravens mm. in a nutshell. Bottom line, they're phenomenal with what they do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.